Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, I would like to read an article entitled The Online Edition of the Maritime Reviews Maritime Review Magazine Joint Development on the West Philippine Sea A series of joint development areas funded by China's ASEAN Infrastructure Investment Bank or AEEB would solve several problems at once. Connected, connected by pipeline infrastructure, they would, they would more deeply integrate Asia's energy markets. During the China-ASEAN dialogue between senior different scholars held at Beijing, China on 12 until on 11 until 15 March 2008, I presented a paper on confidence-building measures toward greater regional stability, military modernization in China was being perceived in a way that caused concern to some countries which fear a repeat of the armed race during the Cold War on one hand and smaller neighboring countries fearful of being bullied by its giant neighbor on the other. The need for confidence building measures within the region become that more organ. China's occupation of a few islets starting a few years earlier had become a destabilizing issue. Since time immemorial, winning the trust and confidence of other countries, especially those nearby, has been universally practiced. In this era of globalization, cross-border issue and economic uncertainty state seek better means to establish a comfort zone wherein they can con conduct activities with one another, make collective decisions while at the same time pursue policies without jeopardizing their individual national interest. Confidence building is a significant concern is in the in the Asia Pacific, not only because of the regret number of states in the region with some having historical enmities, but more importantly because of the wide enmities, but more importantly because of the wide differences exhibit. Confidence building is a significant concern in the Asia Pacific, not only because of the great number of states in region, but some having historical enmities. But more importantly, because of the wide differences exhibited by states in approaching issue of common concern for the region to be truly stable. Therefore, a significant level of mutual trust has to be developed and ensured between and among regional actors. The ultimate objective of confidence building is to achieve security for perceiving threats, general and specific steps undertaken towards the minimization of apprehension and distrust constitute what are formally called as confidence building measures or CBMS. According to Sheldon W. Simon, CBMS are arrangement between two or more parties regarding regarding exchange of information, information and verification, typically with respect to the use of military forces and armaments. Armaments. As an important element in defense and military affairs, CBM spring from states inherent fear of un un unanticipated and miscalculate military attack by other hostile of adversarial countries. They can be useful even at tactical level. As experience in the use of the communications hotline, 
between commanders of maneuver maneuver forces agreement which prohibited preemptive attack during the India Pakistan hostile hostilities in 1991 in a similar situation about a decade later Indian and Pakistani commanders had the additional advantage of being personally acquainted by having attended together an advanced security course sponsored by the Asia Pacific Center of Strategic Studies in Honolulu as related to me by retired U.S. Ambassador Charles Salmon, who was then in the APCSS faculty during his visit in Manila in 2004. However, the military the militarizations of the South China Sea, including much of the West Philippine Sea, had seriously aggravated the situation. The Philippines going to the arbitral tribunal, moreover, had made the Philippines China cliff fetch deeper. Barely at the eve of the announcement of the arbitral tribunal decisions to be made by July 12, 2016, I came across a series of papers written by Stewart Stackard in www.generatex.com that suggests that joint development with China while risking joint petrol with the US may be Philippine option. In his July 9 article, Taggart submits that in coming days, a UN tribunal is expected to rule in the Philippines' favor in its territorial dispute with China over Scabuso. China has flagged it will reject any tribunal decisions that doesn't go its way. When that happens, the ball will the Philippines court. Many last newly elected, largely untested President Rodrigo Duterte will have important decisions to make. Given Durtete's two guy image, one response for Durtete could be to participate in joint patrols with the United States to Scalposo. That would be a stick since China would almost certainly hesitate to directly antagonize a US escort ship. A carrot by contrast would be an offer by the Philippines for joint oil and gas exploration of the Scalposo area. Durtete is also of the de trial balloon. Taker, Taker further justifies his proposal. Chinese and Philippine companies have been holding on and off talks for years now regarding joint exploration and development of the Red Bank area further south. Some combination of the two would probably be Durtete's best option. This would include a freedom of navigation exercise with the U.S. around Scarpuso in response to the U.N. Tribunal ruling, along with extensions of a commercial olive branch to China of joint development of Scarpuso. Don't right, don't right, neither side would lose face. Both could potentially gain. China get a social license, the Philippines get needed capital and the South Asian region would get a welcome template for managing rising military tension. The U.S. the Philippines' primary military ally would almost certainly bless this approach. It turns a territorial issue into a trade issue, providing breathing room for everyone. The result, nobody loses face, nobody starts shooting. The U.S. gets to claim a win of freedom of navigation. The Philippines maintains its territorial assertion, Scapuso lies within its 200 km exclusive economic zone, and China gets the best outcome for a bad hand of card due to its miscalculated overreach in the South China Sea. For China, South China Sea territorial tension with the neighbor is damaging China's report infrastructure drive and the economic credibility of China's Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, or AEEP. Both are much more important right now than bullying the neighbor over offshore waters that may or may not have long-term economic value. So, that's all the article. Bye-bye and see you on my next video. Bye-bye.